Breakfast Club, Y99.3, Matt Ray, Taylor Nitz, and Maddie Poppy live in studio as we continue our conversation. I told you before we went off, uh, well, well, during the break, I want to ask you a personal question. And personal question and nobody likes to talk about money but everybody you know he's gonna be rich and famous but I, I, we worry we've heard about these contracts sometimes record labels where you just you do all this work and you come out on the other end and you get nothing mm -hmm. are you okay money wise are, are you are you making money doing this? I am a billionaire oh, all <laughs> right <laughs> no um, no but that's so funny um, because it's like so like some people are like, oh my gosh, Manny, are you okay? And other people are like, hey, you should be buying me this TV because you're a millionaire. Yeah. Like, why am I buying this? <laughs> and I'm like, like it's so funny to hear people's perspective. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, you you gotta of course recoup. I didn't read any of the contracts, <laughs> <laughs> so listen. I told Lane Hardy, I was like, listen, you need to sit down with the record label and like understand what you can, what you need to recoup, and like. Don't use the studio and don't record the song if you don't like it because it's a like it's a fifteen hundred dollars to rent the studio and a, mm. another grand to pay the producer and like it's like so expensive and you're paying like yeah this ads all on your tab and and I didn't understand that at the time and now I'm like okay now that the album is finished I realize that I need to recoup. Eight hundred thousand dollars before I make anything. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So it's like, but it's fine. I mean, I'm doing what I love. I'm having fun, and also, like, I'm making money from shows and and ads and stuff like that. So it's fun. Have like, you had anybody come up to you and say like, well, here's how you, you plan for like savings in your life? I mean, because because that's a big thing too. Because you hear these horror stories about these artists and like, wow, they're they're famous, they're rich, and they're like. Whoa, they're not anymore. Yeah. Something's gone wrong in their life. So, like, mom and dad come up and say, like, hey, you know, a mom's the counselor. I'd imagine Tanya's the one coming up and You helping know you what? Out. My parents never have talked to me about this. I Dropping hope that the they're. Ball, guys. I hope they're not. And they're definitely listening. But, like, no, they never were like. I mean, if I asked for advice, I'm sure they would. But mm -hmm. I also have a business manager in, um, in New York that, like, sees like what I'm spending every month which is kind of embarrassing because he's probably like you spend sixty dollars at Sephora um, <laughs> you know what I mean um, but yeah I mean they're looking over it but also I'm I'm just like I don't know what's been the most fun part about mm -hmm. this whole thing um, the whole thing being your life now <laughs> man that's a good question um just I mean just being able to like be a normal person but also like have a foot in the door mm. like being able to like meet Megan Trainer and but also like being able to go to my sister's softball games and it'd be fine you know because I feel like I'm like I have one foot into like where you know what what my life used to be like and and also you know I have one foot into like Oh, Katy Perry is like DMing me on Instagram. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it's really cool that I I'm like Hannah Montana. <laughs> you, you worry <laughs> about getting both worlds. Hannah Montana. That's actually kind of perfect. It's yeah. true. Hannah Montana. Do you worry about getting too famous? Do you worry about you know? Because I mean, you've got great great fans and really supportive of you. Sometimes so supportive of you, I'm, I'm shocked at how quick they can retweet something. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Some of you are you that I'm talking to, but um, do, you, do you worry about getting to, so famous where you can't do these things? Because I think people on here have kind of respect you. They want a picture and say hi because they like you, but also let you go and, and, and see your little sister. Yeah, um, I don't worry about that because it's like such a scary world after Idol that it's like okay, there's a new winner. Like, I think the more of the worry is, like, people are going to forget about me and I'm not going to, mm -hmm. like, be, like, I'm not going to, I, like, you need to capitalize it. It's all timing, you know? Yeah. So I think 
it's more of like I need to make something happen you know because it's so up and down and roller coaster like like you can be you know I mean I'm not gonna say any names but there's artists that are like top of the charts you know one year and the next year they have an album and it totally flops mm -hmm. you know and so it's like nothing is guaranteed and that's kind of the fun part I know and it's kind of terrifying but it's also like like what's gonna, you never know what's gonna happen. It's risky business. Now, did you go to prom in high school? I did. Now, does it feel like you're going to prom a whole lot with the way that you have people get to dress you up? And do, I imagine that's got to be somewhat fun. We were talking about on the Bachelor the other day, you know, Bachelorette, but Bachelor, how like we could have thirty women fighting over us <laughs> if we had professional help in the looks department. <laughs> no, I mean, like you don't need as much help as we need. But you, you get these people get to dress you up. Is that fun? It is fun, but also, it's like, oh, like at first I was like not assertive, and I was like, okay, just dress me like whatever, and I ended up kind of looking like Eleanor Roosevelt half the time. <laughs> <laughs> but like now I've learned, like, okay, I can say, you can say you don't like something, or like you can speak up for yourself without being a diva. You know what I mean? Because I'm so that's my my biggest fear is I don't want. You know, because you hear these makeup artists and hair, you know, hairstylists tell you all these stories. Oh, man, that person was so hard to work with. And that is my biggest nightmare. Like, I don't want anyone to have some sort of story that they can tell other people. Because it's like, I'm not on any sort of, you know, I'm, I'm working my way up still. And I don't, mm -hmm. you know. But that's, like, besides the point. I didn't really answer your question. I was... It, it, it's okay. It, it is. It is fun, and um, yeah, getting your hair and makeup done is is a lot of fun too. Because it's, you know, they do it. It's it's frustrating though because I have to do my makeup, you know, like fifty percent of the time, and I'm like, how did they do that? How did they do that with my eye? And I practice and practice. I can't get it. I actually was texting this makeup artist last night. I said, how did you do that on my eye? I can't. And she was like well, you need to draw the line above the crease. And she, like, <laughs> she spelt it all out for me, and I was, you know, so I'm going to be practicing some more. Now, outside of the Idol family, who was the nicest celebrity that you've come across, the one that, that, that you've just enjoyed? Kelly Clarkson. Um, and, I mean, I think I, she, like, and this sounds really weird, but, like, it kind of changed me after I met her because she was at the Radio Disney Music Awards and she had no makeup on and she went out there and sang and like she messed up a couple times played it and like played it off and was joking around and just looked like she was having so much fun and she's just like just a normal person just a regular like mom just a cool mm. person and I talked to her and I was just like she like debunks everything that you know you like you look at all these other people and you're like, I need to be like that. And if I'm going to make it, I need to look like that. I need to do that. And she's just such a normal human and she's like just herself. And that's that's how she made it. And it was so like inspiring. I was, I was just like, I want to be Kelly Clarkson. Like she didn't even know. She, it was like she didn't even know she was Kelly Clarkson, you know? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to ask you one more. We've gone way over time, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> you and Caleb, I, I noticed you guys are, are not ashamed to, to say you guys are really serious and uh, you're enjoying one another. And I'm not going to ask you to get married. I'm not, I'm not the craziest <laughs> trying to force you into getting married right now. But how has it been dating long distance a lot of the time? Is it is it hard? I mean, do you do you struggle with, with things like jealousy and all this? Because... As you know, fans love you. So is it, is it hard for you to deal with that? Well, fans also love him. Well, he's was, cute. Oh, I know. Yeah. That was hard for Once me at first. That voice. <laughs> well, at first it was super hard when we first started dating because we hadn't like built the trust thing yet. Yeah. And I was just like, I would get so jealous if anyone would even comment or like <laughs> if he'd have like a friend back home, I would like suspect oh, is she really a friend, you know? But now it's like, I totally, totally trust each other. And it's, I thought it was going to be a lot harder than it is. Because now it's like, I, I mean, I just, I we trust each other and it's so worth it. Like, I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't trade it for anything. And you know, and so and we're very busy, so sometimes it's nice to have that this sound oh that sounds really bad, but sometimes it's nice to just have that like alone time cuz yeah. you're always surrounded by 100 people. Um but it's a uh, no, I love real relationships I mean, are not about spending each time <laughs> looking at each other in the <laughs> eyes. You know, that's that's not real. Yeah, but no, it's it's been great and like it's working out awesome. I thought I thought it'd be a lot harder than it is. Oh, Maddie, we are so proud of you. Thank you so much for coming in and uh, I know there's a lot of people loving Whirlwind and we uh, can't wait to see what's next. Well, thanks for having me. And seriously, guys, support K-Way because they uh, were the, like the first station to really ever like believe in me and Matt here is the OG. <laughs> um, no, I don't know, but um, keep listening oh. because you guys have a great, great mix also. Well, like, thank you. It's a great, sorry, I'm just, I, I mean, I, I'm just being honest. Like, it's very like, oh, there's stuff from today, but then you play like stuff from the 90s. It's great, you know. Oh. Anyways, thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> Once again, that's Maddie Poppy, our friend from Clarksville, joining us here on The Breakfast Club, Y99.3.